Lin Su Nguyen. I'm the chef and owner of Bear Lou in Portland, Oregon. So it's a tasty menu, we'd say a modern American uh, tasty menu. So I was actually working in a co uh, catering company as a server and um, one day someone called out sick, one of the cooks, and I was the youngest one so they had me jump in the back and help and apparently I fell in love with it and dropped out of school um, like two weeks later and I signed up for culinary school a month later. My sister's a lawyer, my dad, everyone's in the medical field. I was studying to be a doctor, and that was kind of the track I, I uh, was on. And, and then when I started cooking, that was about 12 years ago, it wasn't nearly as um, held in high esteem as it is now. So I remember telling people, telling friends, and you know, they were surprised. They were like, it's kind of, it was kind of a job that you just fall into when you don't have any other options. So um, yeah, and everyone was really surprised. But it took probably like eight, about eight years for my family to kind of, ex they, were, they were always supportive, but they were like, hey, so when are you gonna go, you know, go back to school? Or like, oh, you should try this, you can be a pharmacist. Two years, go to school, make 70 grand, okay. But, so now they've, you know, it took them about eight years and um, now they uh, appreciate and see how dedicated I am and, and cooking in general is just held in higher esteem, so. Definitely vegetable focus. Uh, around the seasons of the markets, um, you know the proteins and that we get as well. Things things are changing just depending on what we can get. It's all very seasonal. Um, things so we've been open four weeks now and things have changed every day. Pretty much every dish on the menu has changed since we started. Just depending on the season availability and also just the progression um, of the restaurant. You know the evolution of the restaurant. So I grew up in Orange County, and my dad, my parents divorced when I was pretty young. And I lived with my dad, and he worked two jobs. So we, um, you know, my, I had an older sister, and we kind of, we ate a lot of fast food, a lot of, a lot of TV dinners, a lot of things that just kids could prepare. So we didn't really eat proper meals, like sit down and eat. So I don't really have too many childhood memories in that sense, um, or that I would apply to this type of food. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it's kind of a strange, strange uh, career choice, seeing as I didn't have any influence as a child, you know, very little Vietnamese influence in general, um, even though I lived really close to, you know, a town called Little Saigon in, in Orange County, which is a large Vietnamese population. Um, still, you know, all my friends were either Hispanic or white, um, so it wasn't really wasn't really introduced to the culture very much. Very much an American upbringing. One of my first restaurants I worked at was Providence, which was a really, you know, was a high-end restaurant. Um, but they kind of more focused on traditional cooking, so I really learned a strong uh, base base structure of cooking. And then I moved on to the younger, more modern chefs, like say uh, Justin Woodward, Matt, Matt Leitner in, in Portland. They're more of the modernists, so I kind of was introduced to this like big organic aesthetic. Um, and that kind of opened up my eyes to the international food scene, which led me to travel and see a, a few other restaurants and experience, um, you know, the, their food and the culture. And um, yeah, then then going to Daniel, his food he's his food really represents uh, the California cuisine. He does it really well. And for me, there's a maturity that he had that he possessed that I kind of lacked. That that I would say like a lot of younger chefs kind of lack. And that's what I benefited most from, 
was the maturity in his food. And, and parts of that, I mean, that's a big part of my food. It's very much um, stripped down. Um, still has like a striking kind of aesthetic, but it's very simple and, and uh, everything is very necessary. You know, um, someone described my food as, or it's often described as minimalist, but I, someone described it as, or described me as an essentialist. And I really like that because that's, um, you know, that's, I feel like that's how the food is. It's, the whole project is we don't have um, much money to, to waste. We don't have an excess of time. We don't have an excess of staff or hands. So everything has to, has to have purpose and, or multiple purposes. Success and happiness, definitely a balance between, um, well, first off, I've always kind of told myself that I want, first and foremost, I want to be a successful father and partner. And then however great a chef I could be is what I'm, I've accepted. You know, I, at one point I wanted to be, the, I, I honestly wanted to be the best chef in the world at one point. But then I saw what it took to be that and I realized that I wasn't willing to make those sacrifices. And yeah, so for me, happiness is having a, a balance of a successful family, family life, social life, while also having an ambitious restaurant that I'm able to express uh, my food. Right now, um, you know, we're four weeks in. So, not as much. I've always been good about, how, there's a balance, say, with like my current girlfriend. You know, I definitely do my best to make the time for her, but in terms of like getting the right amount of exercise and, and proper diet, which is really important to me and something that I've been able to, to um, have that balance with, um, it's kind of been a struggle right now. But I, I see the workload here being manageable enough to where we'll be able to have a balance. Well, for any young cook, I, I, um, I always think it's important that you work at a restaurant where um, they're doing the type of food that you want to do, or the type of restaurant is the restaurant that you want to have. And you don't go somewhere just because they're considered the best, or because um, yeah, that's what you learn will be most applicable to what you want to do. Um, yeah, just be persistent, work hard. It's very different from when I started. You know, there's a lot more opportunity in the sense that chefs are being younger and more empowered now. There's just more avenues of support, whereas before you had to go through this kind of uh, structure of, you know, being a comi and then a chef de partie and then say a sous chef, and then you become a chef de cuisine. And you know, now you have things like pop-ups and you have other options to express yourself. And I think that's really cool. I think cooking is really challenging. I think that's why I've stuck with it for so long and why I enjoy it. Um, kind of slightly masochistic, but um, yeah, I just find it really challenging. So it's easy to s stay humble. It's easy to stay hungry because, and especially with the exposure now, you see s what all these other top chefs are doing. It's so easily accessible. Um, so it's easy to, or so it's um, easy to be motivated to want to to challenge yourself to to keep up with their standard or try to surpass. You know, I love what I'm doing. I'm really excited. Um, the, one of the main reasons why I cook is because 
I want to be able to express my personality. Um, I feel like through cooking, I'm able to do that best. Um, yeah, through food rather than words, I feel. Um, so it's cool when people say, like, all oh, the space is so you, or the food is you, or things like that, because that's, that's the goal. And I think we've been, we've been successful in expressing that so far, and it's going to continue to evolve. But the goal here, this is kind of a small, um, you know, a shorter, um, I plan on doing this project for a few years, and then we're going to outgrow the space eventually. And the space isn't very sustainable for me because it requires me to be here. Um, you know, at all times, I can't take, I can't take a night off. If, if I'm not here, then we close, basically. So just because of the nature of the size and, and what I want out of it, you know? So this is a few, you know, this project's for a few years and then we'll see where we're at, but um, kind of have goals to move out of the state. Uh, my girlfriend's from Montana and eventually we're gonna have a family. And so that's kind of the move I'm thinking is Montana. <laughs> but we have a lot to achieve here first, so I'm not trying to get too far ahead.